Hi, everyone. Thanks, uh, thanks for coming to, to learn more about uh, oracles and how they fit into smart contracts and, uh, and Ethereum's overall future. Um, so I think the, the first useful thing is for us to, to get some shared context and to look, uh, look at the security problem that we're trying to solve and then look at the different ways in which that security problem can, uh, can be solved effectively. So the nature of the problem is that smart contracts on great networks like Ethereum can't connect with external data. This is based on how they reach consensus about transactions, how they uh, verify, verify the data in, in, in blocks, and it isn't something that's likely to change. It's, it's an inherent problem of all decentralized infrastructure that seeks to package transactions into blocks because the miner set that you have doing that um, you don't want a specific miner responsible. You don't want him having control over the ability to, you know, make your contract trigger from data or not trigger. And you also can't have the entire miner set exposed to various arbitrary APIs. So this is, this is known as the Oracle problem, and it's the inability of, of layer one systems to interact with external data. Now, the significance of this is, is rather large. Um, the significance of this is, is why we are currently mainly defined as an industry by tokens. And we're defined as an industry by tokens because that's effectively what base layer one systems can do because they have it inherently built in to incentivize mining and therefore uh, allow their, you know, their base, basic existence. Now, the, the reality is, is, is that if you look at the, the rest of the world and you look at all the digital agreements powering uh, financial products in, in various centralized forms, the insurance industry, the global trade, trade finance industry. All of these industries use some form of digital agreement, and all of those forms of digital agreement um, require inputs. Inputs about what happened relative to the agreement's terms. So generally speaking, we call these events, and the, the, the ability for a contract to know about an event is, the, is, the necessary point, is a necessary condition for it to be written about that event. So, as essentially, the, the, the significance of the limitation is with, without the ability to interact with, with events, smart contracts um, would stay related to tokens, which is only a small percentage of what our technology could be about. So our industry could be about financial products, insurance, global trade, if, if we're able to solve this problem. So historically, how, how our industry has actually evolved is it's gone from uh, a smaller set of capabilities for developers to a larger set of capabilities. The first large shift in capabilities was from Bitcoin multi-signature as the only capability that anybody could build around in around you know, 2011, 12. And uh, then in about 14, you had the first app coins, as they were called. Uh, these were protocol smart contracts where you had to bake a smart contract into each protocol. Then the protocol smart contracts got switched over to scriptable contracts. And scriptable contracts is what Ethereum deserves um, the vast majority of the credit for. They've done a, a, a fantastic job of taking our space from these protocol contracts that took months to, to get launched to scriptable contracts, which took days to launch. And because they took days to launch, we now have all these people launching massive uh, high value systems uh, based on this capability. Uh, and as you can see, a lot of those systems are pretty much exclusively focused on tokens because at the moment, that's what scriptable capabilities allow. What we think is that scriptable contracts together with uh, external events is how our space moves into this entirely new stage of usefulness for, uh, for developers, for users, you know, how we redefine our space to be about um, tokens and all the other types of digital agreements that, uh, that underpin you know, very important global industries. Generally speaking, this is the problem that we work on. Uh, we focus on creating uh, secure blockchain middleware. Uh, that product is called Chainlink, and it, it basically focuses on uh, enabling the ability to get data into networks like Ethereum, get networks like Ethereum to pay in other systems and interact with other environments, as well as get them to do cross-chain things. Uh, we're, we're already live on mainnet, it's all working, and, and the things that I'm gonna be showing to you are live and working and usable by, by US developers. So generally speaking, the, 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 I, I think there's kind of two, two key points in, in this talk. One, one key point is how do you define the security of an oracle so that you can rely on it to trigger your contract? So that's, that's a very important question. And then the second question is once you rely on the security of an oracle, what can an oracle really do for you? 
right? Like, okay, I've, I've, I've arrived at a place where I can, can uh, assess and feel comfortable about the security of, these, of this Oracle mechanism, which effectively makes up the second half of my contract. Because if, if my contract is about an event, I have a piece of it about on-chain state, and I have a piece of it about the event. And both the on-chain state and the off-chain event needs to be properly guaranteed from a technical point of view in order for the, the smart contract to retain its unique property of reliability. So the, these, are, these are kind of the points I'm going to be speaking about and, and elaborating on what, uh, what it is that, that what makes a secure oracle and what a secure oracle can do to expand what, what developers in our space could build to, to create all these other various types of usefulness and, and, and valuable contracts. Uh, generally speaking, our approach to, to all of this is the ability to uh, provide decentralization for the Oracle mechanism by having multiple independent node operators validate um, the accuracy of Oracle, uh, Oracle reports. Uh, we do this through something called binding service agreements. Binding service agreements um, make an Oracle commit to delivering a certain quality of data or computation or a payments outcome, and that commitment is both technically and cryptographically guaranteed and crypto economically guaranteed through things like staking. Uh, the ability for all the binding service agreements that an Oracle uh, generates to be aggregated into a picture of that Oracle's overall uh, reliability. Uh, the application of something called defense in depth where we layer on multiple security approaches on top of decentralization such as trusted execution environments and zero knowledge proofs. And uh, the fact that we do this with a large open source community made up of some of the best academic researchers uh, the best, some of the best security auditors and, and, and a large and growing group of developers that are excited about enabling this world of smart contracts beyond tokenization. So it's usually useful to look at the problem we're solving. The, the specific problem we're solving is the, the problem of centralization and the capacity for an oracle to fail because it's been, uh, it's been it's been, it's been made unreliable by being attacked as a single point of failure. Uh, generally speaking, the, the way to approach this is through decentralization. Uh, just like the contract is secured through multiple uh, node operators validating the, the inputs and the, well, val validating the transactions that the, that, the, that the block in the contract is made up of, we have multiple oracles validating that an input is, is indeed correctly validated and secure and reliable enough to trigger large amounts of value. Uh, this is partly guaranteed by service agreements. Service agreements are not legal documents. They are on-chain commitments that are cryptographically and technically enforced to guarantee that an oracle does deliver data and that if an oracle doesn't deliver data, there's, um, there's immediate and inescapable penalties, both to their, their, their long-term usefulness for other users uh, and immediate loss of, of stake uh, and, 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 and other negative factors. Generally speaking, uh, we see a world where just like you have uh, right now extreme decentralization in Ethereum, you should be able to have whatever degree of decentralization you'd like to have from the Oracle mechanism. And also that'll probably lead to decentralization at the data source level such that you know, the highest value, hundreds of millions of dollar contracts, you, you already see them thinking about all these things in more detail. And you see them wondering, why do I think an Oracle is secure? How do I know that this data source won't be compromised? How do I protect myself from a data source being compromised? How do I protect myself from an Oracle being compromised? These are the problems that our space is gonna to have to have an answer to if we, want to, if we want it to move into this realm of events-driven contracts. So that's, that's the very large focus that, that, that we have, is solving the problem of how do you reliably provide guarantees that um, your events-driven contract can have a billion dollars put into it and can be considered reliable, reliable enough to move that million, billion, 100 million billion dollars in a matter of seconds, which is the, the real you know, promise and value of our space. So generally speaking, the way this looks in practice is um, you know, service agreements are made up of something called jobs. Jobs are basically function as a service blocks of predefined computations that a node operator lists themselves as opting in to do. You interact with them as on a service agreement. They commit to, to do this computation for you, in this case, the retrieval of price. Uh, you select from a, a multitude of nodes. Uh, we have, I think, approaching 70 high-quality nodes now, and I think a quarter of them are security-reviewed in a two-week process with a security interview at the end, uh, both creating civil resistance and an overview of, of their security infrastructure, which we then present to users as well. 
And generally speaking, the goal is, uh, well, the, this goal, right, what, I, what I'm showing you here has been achieved. You, if you want to compose a reliable Oracle network with multiple independent parties running that network and multiple independent data sources feeding your uh, decentralized finance contract reliable data, you can, this, is, this has now been achieved on mainnet. It's been live for you know, a number of months now without, without any security issues. Likewise, if you wanted to compose um, something like smart, uh, smart contract, a smart contract for crop insurance, the crop insurance uh, would, would learn about weather, it would aggregate data about weather, and it would then uh, arrive at, at a conclusion for that, for that outcome. And then also through, through the set of oracles that we have, be able to, to execute payments. So it would be able to ingest inputs, put outputs, and you know, these are the previous DeFi example and this example are, are, are what we're really trying to get the space to, so that just, uh, just like you could write a token in a day, you should be able to compose um, a high quality externally connected contract in a day. Generally speaking, what, what all of this usage does, and, and this is one of the important nuances of, of how you would evaluate an oracle, is it generates a lot of data. It generates massive amounts of data, uh, just like you have block explorers for Ethereum contracts, we have even more detailed block explorers for uh, Chainlink Oracle reports that define exactly what somebody did, what they committed to do, and whether they met their previous commitment. You can, you can find all this in a, in a multitude of resources, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that at the end of the talk for, um, for a set of Oracle's, uh, Oracle networks that we call reference data networks. So generally speaking, the part of the goal here is how do I, as a, as, as a user, uh, effectively assess a node operator that I can then compose into greater and greater networks and such that if my, the value of my contract grows, I can compose greater and greater collections of node operators. We enable this by floating uh, provable information about their infrastructure, how, how, how they've been able to successfully fulfill their commitments, and also what specific infrastructure they run on, and also the capabilities they can give you through that infrastructure. So, so that's the thing that we've actually been seeing quite a bit of. Um, since, since launching on mainnet, we've been seeing quite a lot of adoption and, 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 and additional usage, not only in data delivery, but in the ability for a chain link to connect smart contracts to all the different you know, function as a service systems, all the different computational environments other, other, than, uh, other than blockchains, which, which gives smart contracts the capacity to securely use huge, huge amounts of computing resources. This is, for example, a diagram we released um, in, in, a, in a post with Google describing how a theoretical architecture would look in, in the case of using Google Cloud's platform for one of their specific core services like BigQuery. And here, here at DEF CON, there's been released by, by one of our users, Foam, a uh, you know, great group of folks basically building uh, an, an incentive service, uh, a service to generate valuable location data using token incentives. And, and here's how that architecture looks. So just like, um, you know, just like we started out with data and we've started to enable a lot of DeFi and a lot of simpler on-chain contracts with data, the next stage in, in, in all of this is actually expanding the definition of an oracle beyond just um, something that provides data, but something that actually provides access, secure and provably secure access to all the different computational resources available outside of blockchains. This includes uh, random number generators, it includes all the resources in cloud providers, all the great pre-made services and functions as a service that you would wanna use, and the capacity to validate and prove that those um, computations were correctly executed um, on one service or even across, across different services. So I, I think the interesting thing that we've seen is the capacity to move beyond data and into data plus computation, such that Chainlink becomes an off-chain resource that developers can go to to compose whatever interactions they need to compose around their contract in, 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 in the world of all, of all the already existing high quality um, off-chain computation that's out there. Another example of this is our recent announcement at the start of this conference about how Chainlink enables Ethereum contracts to use Intel's trusted computing framework. So Intel has spent a lot of time and effort and, and, and we've been working with them to generate uh, a good trusted computing framework that implements uh, trusted execution environments as, as something that can be used in layer two systems. And the capacity to, to use layer two systems that use trusted execution environments as, uh, as an off-chain computational resource that provides a highly, highly reliable, highly scalable, uh, private um, computations 
while keeping a contract on chain is, is right now, due to the current limitations of on-chain contracts, probably the way people are gonna build high throughput, high value applications that still have access to public network value, right? So on the, on the one hand, we want applications that exist in large public networks like Ethereum that have access to, that, to, the, to the user set, to the network effect uh, kind of value that that, that, that network has uh, accrued. But at the same time, we want a lot of functionality because we want to build more and more complex, more and more valuable and useful contracts. And the middle ground seems to be uh, the capacity for a developer to, to use an off-chain computation environment to interact with all the different computations they need and then to prove back on chain that those computations that they performed were properly performed, that the data was properly delivered for those computations and that that computation can form a reliable part of that contract. Right? So that's, that's kind of the, the, the expansion of, of, of what we're starting to define Chainlink as. What, what a lot of this leads to is it, it leads us to a world where across environments we have chain link node operators that are servicing various different chains and they're accruing usage. And that usage in various different environments is once again another source of proof. It's a source of proof that there's you know, five DeFi applications, two insurance applications, you know, five uh, gaming applications using this node operator. And this node operator is able to successfully deliver data and randomness and, and, and various types of data to these users and that provides even greater surety. So as a, as a system like ours gets used, you, you start to accrue a lot more data about each individual node operator, and that accrual of data provides even greater assurances. So there, there's kind of a, a network effect from usage that allows people to, to, to continually define greater degrees of their security and guarantees for users. Now, one of the things that we've been using, um, you know, one, one, one of the Oracle networks that we've composed for the use of the ecosystem are these reference, uh, price reference data networks. Price reference data networks basically put data on chain. They put data on chain for use mainly by DeFi projects. And right now, price reference data networks, um, like, like the one I, I'm showing here, powers all of decentralized finance. So, well, it, except if somebody made a centralized Oracle and you took a big risk on that, but you know, that's, that's their decision, which I don't really advise. Um, so, so these price re reference data networks that we've already made right now have grown to be the largest, most secure, most civil resistant. We can definitively say that because we have the, the most node operators, for example, in this uh, network with ETHUSD price, we have 17 and we're far ahead of schedule to reach the, the targeted 21. We have multiple high quality uh, data aggregator sources, so not original exchanges, but data aggregators that take on the, the burden of making sure the data is correct. And it's a civil resistant network because we validated these node operators over the course of a two week process and a final security interview. And it's also um, you know, security reviewed in, in, in many other forms like the ways that I showed you. So even the, the, the node operators I showed you in the previous slide with all that detail are the ones that are powering a network like this. So these reference data networks are actually very important. Um, as you can see, you can dig into them. We encourage you to go and, 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 and look at them. Uh, you can once again see exactly what they're doing. And, and this level of clarity is supposed to provide users a guarantee that the reference data on this network is reliable enough to trigger their hundreds of millions of dollars in value. Whereas any other type of reference data network or some centralized Oracle wouldn't have any of this information. You wouldn't have any guarantees that this Oracle is committed to or has successfully performed its obligations previously. We've, uh, we've had so much success so far d doing this and it's, it's been done so securely over the, over the past number of months that we've, uh, we're basically committing to expand the amount of reference data networks. These are the next seven reference data networks that we're gonna be launching. Uh, Bitcoin, DAI, USDC, 0x, REP, WBTC, and, and BAT prices. These prices and, and feeds were chosen based on the needs of our users and customers. They're meant to, to service um, systems like Compound, uh, partially synthetics, partially other systems that are gonna be building their contracts and securing their value using these reference data networks. Uh, these reference data networks are once again, I mean, they're provided free by us. If somebody wants to add security to them, uh, we're gonna be releasing information about how somebody could take a reference data network with you know, five or seven oracles and how they can add more oracles to that reference data network in case they start using it and they wanna add more security on top of the initial security we paid for. But we're, we're very excited to, to be giving back to the community uh, because the Ethereum community has done a huge amount for us. 
And we're, we think that the capacity to have high quality data on chain and to make it extremely usable and reliable is one of the key things that will kickstart DeFi. And so right now we're committing to put these seven networks out because we know they're gonna successfully service um, you know, existing users and customers. And beyond that, we plan to launch many more uh, in, in that vein. If you, if you have a DeFi project, if you have a need for uh, a reference data price on chain, uh, we, we wanna support you. And, and our goal as a company is actually to make our users succeed by giving them access to this reliable data. So our chain link is basically here to, to enable smart contract developers to build any kind of externally connected or next generation contract. And if, if that's what you're doing, um, you know, we're very collaborative, very helpful people. We have a huge integration engineer and support engineering staff that, that, that is there to help you build these contracts. And likewise, even make a great uh, reference data network, possibly even, even starting out for your use case but then getting used by other, um, other DeFi projects as well. So thank you, thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all at the conference. Thank you.